This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Marriage of Maria Braun from 1979, directed by Rainier Werner Fassbinder. <gasps> the tagline for the film, RJ, a mm-hmm. German woman named Maria struggles to live through World War II. Not accurate. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, if if it had said after, yeah, then that would that would be pretty pretty accurate, no? Yeah, it would be a bit more. This is like uh, they kind of skip over that whole entire period of time. Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure if someone was asked to describe your life, they'd probably leave out some of the finer details, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. The synopsis: Near the end of World War II, Maria marries Herman who is immediately sent off to battle. When the Mm -hmm. war concludes, Maria believes that Herman is dead. She starts working at an allied bar where she meets American soldier Bill. They start a relationship that is interrupted when Herman returns alive. During a scuffle between the men, Maria accidentally kills Bill. Herman takes the blame and goes to jail while Maria begins a hard new life. Do you think that's more accurate? I don't know about the hard new life part yeah i mean i mean she has challenges sure but there's not anything about it that's really like <clears throat> who writes the reviews for these again just anyone just any old asshole off the street oh so okay. what what is this brd trilogy rj uh is this the bprd trilogy that's that all you... I, that's all i think of when i see it because uh, when you mentioned that in the preamble, when you're like the BRD trilogy, and I was like, what the hell is he talking about? I was like, did I miss something? Like, is there like, more like, Hellboys like, like coming hell out? hell on earth? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on? Because I feel Plague really of out of the loop. So um, Tell me about it. From anonymous assholes on the internet. Okay. The films are connected in a thematic rather than in a narrative sense. All three okay. films, uh, which we'll be talking about in the over the next three weeks, all mm-hmm. three deal with different characters, though some actors recur in different roles and plot lines, but each one focuses on the story of a specific woman in West Germany after World War II. The three-letter acronym BRD stands for Bund- Bundesrepublik Deutschland, the official name of West Germany and of the United Contemporary Germany. Fassbinder had the idea of making a series of films that focused on West Germany during the economic miracle of the 1950s. The main characters were all female, representing different people in different circumstances. While the original treatments and stories were developed by Fassbinder himself, the detailed scripts of all three films were written by screenwriter Peter Marthsheimer, who had worked mm-hmm. with the director as a, as a commissioning producer and script editor of some of his TV projects with the help of his then-partner Pia Froelich. The films were shot and released in a slightly different order to their accepted numbering. Maria Braun released in 1979 is the earliest in terms of both production and the chronology of the plot beginning in 1945. However, it only became part of the trilogy retrospectively when Fessbinder had added the caption BRD3 to Lola when it was released in 1981. Veronica Voss, uh, released a year later as Fessbinder's penultimate film before his death, included the caption BRD2 and is set in a slightly earlier period than Lola. Fassbinder did not intend the series to stop at a trilogy, but his plans to make further films in the same mold were cut short by his death. Um, the more you know. So there was a lot of fun names in that description. Yes. Like Goober Gottman and... Frolic. Frolics and Schlingles. And uh, lots of culturally sensitive names. Yeah. If you understand, I mean, I mean, okay. Okay. That's uh, descriptive and uh, informative. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, mm-hmm. Maria Rich and Maria Brown. I had never seen this before. I haven't seen any of these three. Uh, my Fassbinder knowledge is not too deep. Uh, the, er, the first and earliest uh, that I'd seen was Ali, Furious the Soul, which we talked about mm-hmm. several weeks ago, and mm-hmm. we both were fans. Yes. But I've also seen a couple of his other films that were a little bit more experimental in some of its formal elements. And so I was kind of curious which Fassbinder was going to show up with Marriage of Maria Brown. And it's kind of in between. Uh, One of the things that jumps out at me that I see in a lot of his other films that I have seen so far is his use of fonts and his uh, title cards and his use of credits, which in this are in this kind of like elaborate, kind of like uh, mono-red calligraphy. Mm -hmm. And you're just like inundated with names that are just popping up on the screen. And 
for me, a colorblind person, uh, it kind of buzzes on my eyes and I I, I can kind of read it, but I don't really know what's going on. But Mm -hmm. he's very, um, this suggests the playfulness of sort of his uh, use of film, which is, I guess, different than some of the Germans. I mean, Werner Herzog thinks he's having fun sometimes when he's uh, crucifying (laughs) monkeys and uh, Mm. (laughs) uh, putting uh, indigenous people through uh, hell. (laughs) But, But it's neither here nor there. Yeah. Same with that, Jarrett. As a non-colorblind person who doesn't have the baggage of Werner Herzog uh, looming over him, uh, I thought those opening credits were great. Yeah. Because of the uh, like the frantic nature of what was happening, and then the they credits nice. coming on, it was kind of like a comedy almost. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what? Such fun. Well, such it, fun. Kind of jumping the gun, like the end of the movie, and then the ending, also, where, where yeah. they just they just start playing, even though yeah. the movie's not finished, and it's like, go home, folks. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I I liked that quite a bit, too. I was like, hey, look, this is something people would try hard. People would try today. But, you know, <laughs> back then, quite good. Yeah, cutting quite edge. Uh, so the movie opens up. Like, the movie does play as like a dark comedy. Uh, yeah. It opens up with Maria getting married to Herman while mm-hmm. the uh, civil office is getting bombed the shit out of. And they're still trying to get married. And then there's a guy who has to sign something. And they're like, we didn't get the thing signed off. So they go find this man who's now face down, dying. And they're like, getting his hands. Like, come on, you just got to finish writing it out. But it's, mm-hmm. and it's played like not kind of neutrally. So, which I think also adds to the humor. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we jump ahead and we're being informed that uh, Maria is waiting for her husband to return from the front. And, but no one knows where he is. He could be dead. He might, who knows? He, she has no information. And uh, we get kind of this, like the, that post-war image of just like a bombed out city, rubble everywhere. Lots of walking around through rubble, which is curious because the movie is made in like, what, 78? And uh, there's this still these parts of uh, Europe where you could still go and things are still in like just shit. But who knows? I don't know if they're still bombed out from that initial thing or they're just like, being bulldozed and he's just shooting them in those types of sites. But mm-hmm. that's always the curious thing about Germany is you're never quite sure. Well, it's, it's, a, was... it's a, it's a place in transition, RJ. Oh, it's a transitioning location. I understand. Uh, I kind of felt that too. Like not in, um, again, jumping the gun a little bit, but like, uh, I kind of liked the scattered nature of that a little bit where it was kind of like sometimes they're just in buildings that were half blown up and they're just like walking through the holes in the walls. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, hmm. I was like, it's pretty wild. It's what, how it was. Mm-hmm. Crazy stuff. But I, I thought it fit with the storyline too with the old Maria Braun kind of moving around in her mm-hmm. rubbled relationships, you know. So it's her and her sister, right? Uh, I or think sister, that... Or maybe sister-in-law? I I was kind of like, I was a little confused at one point. I was like, it's either like her just best friend that she calls a sister or it's like an actual sister or cousin or yeah, something. Because I mean, it could be. Who knows? See, that's the thing. I'm not sure if it's her, because it could be Herman's sister and they, she's just living with them or it's kind of like. Oh, maybe. Something like that. We, who knows? Yeah. These familiar relationships that we were encountering where it's not like like explicitly stated like we're like yeah come on my sister we have to do th- we have to talk about this that's not yeah. happening here it doesn't really matter too much it, but there's like time moments where uh, it's kind of confusing just a tad but anyway we mm-hmm. get the scene where they're getting made up because they're they got to made they got to work they got to make a living in this uh this economy um uh, and so they're getting gussied mm-hmm. up they they, start, they have lots of makeup on hair's done up looking like poodles and uh, they, they go to they go to work at yeah. the American GI nightclub where women mm-hmm. aren't allowed, but you can if you're an employee, which is a nice little loophole. And that's a good. Hmm. I didn't I didn't pick up on that part. Like I knew I saw that they were there, and then when when they come back, I didn't realize what the uh, the contingency there was. Yeah, I think it's explained uh, when it's the interrogation of her by the police. Oh, okay. Because like, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's being read to them by the American and then the Germans, the German guys translating it. Yeah. yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. I so, follow. yeah. So Maria starts working there and you're getting like these kind of moments of like her trying to figure out with her, whether she doesn't know if her husband's alive or dead, and, but, but she is very committed until she, mm-hmm. something fully commits, like proves that he's dead. And that day comes when 
her sister roommate sister-in-law's uh, husband returns and says, oh, he's mm-hmm. dead. He died. I saw it kind of thing. Like he was, he was like, absolutely. Yeah. She's he's pretty confident about it too. Yes. Yes, he is. And so she, she yeah. goes ahead to move on, but she's not even, she's not even like, she's okay to meet another man, but she is not going to marry anybody. Like she's still, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still married. I still, I still married this man. I owe it to him. And so, mm-hmm. so she starts uh, hanging out with this guy, Bill. Bill's a good dude. So, so, soldier Bill, uh, mm-hmm. African-American man. He's mm-hmm. uh, n- not this like, you know, strapping young man. He's like a burly man. And, he's a man's uh, man. He's a man's man. Uh, I, I don't think he's a professional actor. <laughs> he seems a little awkward mm. on camera as a performer, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm not going to mm-hmm. not gonna yeah, bust, bust anyone's balls here. He's mm-hmm. fine. And uh, they, they, he starts teaching her a little bit of English. They have, they have these mm-hmm. nice little scenes of them walking around. And uh, then we get some, uh, some belly rubbing, mm-hmm. and some back rubbing. Very, very sweaty, Oof. sensual moments. Do you ever have any sweaty, sensual back rubs in your house? Maybe not sensual, but sweaty. No, uh, no not yet. No. I, I'm a big fan of the back rubs. Sweaty, yeah. not sweaty, whatever. Like, I, oof, baby. No. Continue. So, so they're, they're, they're hitting it off. And, uh, but they're, they're about to get down again. Mm-hmm. You know, as they're doing, we've got Bill down to just his uh, wool socks. Mm-hmm. And over in the doorway, there's Herman. He's alive, alive and well. <laughs> and he's watching his lady mm-hmm. bedding down with another man. And uh, he takes it as well as you'd expect. He belts her one. Bill's like, whoa, whoa, that's no way to treat a woman. He's like overpowering Herman, who's very distraught by this whole thing. He doesn't understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. He's probably a mess. You know, he's been in like a, a Russian jail all this time. And uh, I guess has just been released. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, Maria doesn't know what to do either. And she winds up uh, cracking a bottle right over the back of Bill's head. So how'd you feel about that scene? Because I was a little conflicted for the most part. Because when, when Herman came, I was kind of like, who's this old pervert? And then you see it happen and you're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you misunderstanding i mean rightfully so it's a pretty tense scene pretty tense because all uh, like it's all kind of like one shot almost it feels like yeah it is and i think i said before i think bill's a good dude and i kind of felt bad for bill in that scene because i was like you know bill was doing the right thing the whole time he never he never like forced himself on anyone and he was just there for her and then i was like oh man they did bill dirty shit happens i was like is this a metaphor i don't know i don't know I don't know. That's above my pay grade. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I guess there's this, also this implication that uh, Maria is pregnant with Bill's kid, but she's still not going to marry this guy. But mm-hmm. but but then it's kind of uh, that's resolved off camera. There's mm-hmm. there's <laughs> it's yeah because so that's another thing. Like I, I I feel like I say this sometimes. I don't think this movie is confusing. No. But at the same time, there was a, a little a few times I was playing catch up where I was like, wait a minute. What happened to this baby? Because it gets mentioned for a while, yes. and then it's just and then it's just not mentioned anymore. It's yep. like, well, I know she went to the doctor. Yes, there's the and doctor. I know the doctor's doing his own deal. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the, uh, they're, 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 Christopher Montesante style. Yeah, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, and then there's it was uh, like, so there's no baby. No, there's a lot of talk. Yeah. There's a lot of talk, and she goes to this doctor quite a bit, and mm-hmm. and you're always wondering what the relationship is there. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, again, uh, interesting scenes. Um, yeah. So anyway. Uh, Maria's being kind of like uh, tried, I guess, for this murder of this American soldier. And uh, after explaining and uh, her devotion to Herman comes through, Herman's like, I did it. I'm the one who killed him. <laughs> and he goes to jail for it. And uh, mm-hmm. Maria decides, I'm going to do whatever I can to make this right because I-, I still love my husband. This is like, she absolutely stands by him. And so she, mm-hmm. everything she's doing is kind of like, orchestrates that and like really okay. up to this point mm-hmm. the only thing she's done wrong is the uh you know moving on unknowing that her husband's still alive so mm-hmm. she starts like stepping up her game and she starts uh in what sense uh her her seduction of of oh of, my of god she, and she uh she, she gets out of that uh you know riding coach on a train she goes mm-hmm. into first class there's a, a nice uh french german man Carl Oswald. Oh, Mr. Oswald? Yes. He's mm-hmm. an older man. He's in the textile industry. 
and she and she plays her cards out there, but she's a she's a tough as nails broad. She knows her mm-hmm. way. It's like, how do you know English? I learned it in bed. It's like, ooh. Uh, there's their yeah. So she shows her stuff, and uh, it intrigues him because he's an mm-hmm. old. He, it turns out he's a horn dog. And he, well, and he, and I mean, he, and who isn't? Who isn't? So, so, but she's playing that game. She's playing hard to get. She wants to be his mistress. That's what she wants. She, she'll work for you. She'll be around mm-hmm. you at your beck and call. But at the end of the day, you can't have me because she has to also be. She's playing this angle. She, she's got. She's doing. She's setting stuff up. So when Herman gets out, he's going to have a great life with her. But she's got to do what's necessary to get to that point. And uh, she starts climbing that uh, textile game, working this mm-hmm. guy into a frenzy. He wants her real bad. And one day he follows her, finds out about this Herman guy in jail. And Herman goes and uh, he gets paid a visit by Oswald. Oswald says, hey, uh, you when you get out, you got to leave. You got to go to Canada. Canada, RJ. <clears throat> now, was there something that I missed? Like uh, some. <laughs> Excuse me. Some part of intricate German history that Canada had this connection, or was, is it just a funny coincidence? It's a. It seems like a exotic location to some. It's where you. It's, what it's, Canada? It's, yeah, it's it's where you go when you want to drop off the map because no one's coming to look for you in Canada. Well, shit. That's actually kind of true. I mean, think about it. If you wanted to, you drive four or five hours from here. No one would ever find you. When I was watching Blue Collar the other week, Harvey Keitel's a bail plan of like leaving his family behind and getting out of this situation with the union trying to kill him, go to Canada, just right across the river, get to Windsor. I mean, to Windsor, that's too, uh, well, yeah. I think you could uh, you could uh, escape to Canada pretty well where yeah. no one would ever find you. Go become a, really. a maple syrup farmer. It's not, you know what I heard once was that 90% of maple syrup comes from like eastern Canada. And, uh... And it's still not that great. No, but 100% of Canadian economy comes from Western Canada. Ah. Oh. Ayo. Oh, hey. So hey. Uh, mm-hmm. Maria plays the game. She gets rich, mm-hmm. buys a big house. Her mother. Yeah, she does. Oh, yeah. There's also this, uh, her mother. Her, her mother's <laughs> got her game going on. She's there sometimes. She, she's got her thing. She's uh, yeah. picked up this uh, younger man. This real bozo in a wife beater and shorts. I got a good screen cap of that. That might be accompanying this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he's born kind of like on the peripheral, and uh, they they want to be in this house. Look at this great place. She's like, nope, mm-hmm. I want to live here alone. So she's waiting for Herman. So uh, eventually, our uh, Oswald dies. Dies off camera. He, he, he had, he had it's alluded to before, yes. and then it, yeah, and then it just happens. And then it happens. And mm-hmm. then, of course, they uh, now Herman can return from Canada back back to Germany, back to the Deutschland. Mm-hmm. And they start having this long conversation where he's wearing this fedora for a very long period of time. And I've become very mm-hmm. aware of it. There's kind of a coldness and distance there. She's changing out of clothes. She's wearing this very alluring lingerie. And then she's wearing mm-hmm. a dress over top of it. There's a lot of back and forth, uh, very uh, theatrical. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a scene that like kind of they keep playing it out where she leans over a, a stove top, a gas mm-hmm. stove, lights a cigarette. This time yep. though, she doesn't turn to the knob, and I know what's going to happen. I know, I know what it's going to be. And then the, the the tensions play out, the 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 frictions as they keep talking, and these scenes keep going. You're like, what's going to happen? That house is just filling up with gas. What what what's going to happen? And then finally. The house explodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a nice big callback to the beginning of the movie of being shelled out by Allied bombers. It's like nothing ever happened. Did they ever leave? Well, I think it's a metaphor for Germany in general, Jared. I think this movie is many metaphors layered on top of layers. Do you understand? I, I can only begin to fathom it, the depths. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what did you find of uh, this movie? I liked it. You did it. a good job outmining it, and you liked it, you say. I like this movie. Um, I, mm-hmm. I mean, I still would say, like, Ali Fury's The Soul is more my speed. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like those melodramas. This does not, this is not a melodrama. It definitely feels mm-hmm. more of a kind of a film exercise, and there's a like kind of a rough idea there. And it's not a movie that's really meant to be got very easily, and it doesn't care if it's really got that easily. But. Mm-hmm. It looks, I think it looks great. Um, the movie, it feels, um, 
and very naturalistic, even though it's like at times very stylized in the way mm-hmm. that the story is depicted. But yeah, no, I, I just I found that it was a uh, kind of a, a refreshing movie. I, I I've been really enjoying like these German uh, these new wave German wave movies that we've been watching. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's his name? Schlondorfer. <laughs> The, Who? Sorry, uh, Schlondorfer. The uh, oh yeah, who's that? La- La- lost. What was it? The lost case of Katharina Blum. Oh okay. L- lost honor of Katharina Blum. Lost honor. Yes, mm-hmm. and the uh, the one the World War One World War Two one black and white Le Le Offre. Le <laughs> Offre. Yeah, that. Yo, that yeah, I'll find it for that, you. That ticket. Anyway, I've been really enjoying these. Like these, mm-hmm. I, I I I love the feeling of them. They don't. They feel different. Um. Than the American seventies movies, obviously they're being made in a different country with a much smaller budget, but just mm-hmm. I, lo- I like the approach. Even right. that, even that Werner Herzog guy we've talked about before, you know. Oh, uh, that hurt Zog. That hurt Zog. Okay, but yeah, I I, I thought this was uh, another pleasant surprise, and I'm glad that we're breaking these up into weekly installments rather than watch three mm-hmm. two hour movies in one week. That would let them breathe. Let them breathe. We got time. No one's going anywhere. It was and coup de gras. There is a coup de gras. Okay. The the mm. Dufro one's the uh forties the forties one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, right, yep. right. Okay. Anyways, hey RJ. Yo. What did you think of this marriage to Maria Braun? Uh I also liked the marriage of Maria Braun. <laughs> um for a few reasons. Uh as I said before, I think the intro is pretty nice in the sense where it kind of plays like a comedy. But it's so like kind of hectic and all over. You're just like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> what, what, a, what a fun way to start a movie. Let's see what happens. And then you're like, oh, shit. Girlfriend got married. Now he's gone. And uh, she's looking for him. She's holding up those signs. I feel like this movie has a, a very natural, like, as much as she does. I, like, I wouldn't say she's quite the Forrest Gump trope where it's like story after story after like side quest after side quest. Uh, but she's got enough where it's kind of like, yeah, in the span of a person's life, I feel like you could go through all these things where it's get married, lose husband, advertise for new husband, get new husband. Uh oh, old husband. Uh oh, old husband, new husband, yep. conflict, drama. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, old husband gone, new husband gone. Hey, guess what? Secondary new husband or adulterer. And it's like, so that's the thing. It's it's not quite the Forrest Gump thing yet, but uh, I think it goes through enough where it's like, yeah, it seems like a normal life. Sure. So uh, I like the intro. I like the movie itself. Um, it's it's just a well well made movie. It's watching it, you're like, yeah, this is a real movie. Uh, I know that sounds not, silly, not a, but not a fake movie. Well, sometimes we watch movies on this chair where it's just like, whoa. You're like, what is this? Not real movies. Let me go to let me go to the end of my uh, <laughs> rated here reviewing here. Let's see what we got here. Element of crime. There you go. Schizopolis. You know, unbearable lightness of being. Any of those movies will do. Magic flute. So you you watch those and you're like, uh, what what's this doing in here? And then you watch this and you're like, this is a good movie. It's like, is this criterion worthy? doesn't really matter that's not a real thing but you know at the same time pretty well put together and it's like i said earlier i think there's many metaphors here above our pay grade for sure but i was like hmm i wonder if all of her remarrying and partners is metaphors for people and the political state of germany before and after the war before during and after the war Hmm. with her allies it's like, mayhaps, mayhaps. And then it's like, oh, here's this nice American gentleman, this African-American man. And it's like, he he gets done wrong. And it's like, I wonder what that means. So there's many things there. I'm not about to say what I believe those feel because I'm probably wrong. And I feel like other people would say that better than I would. But I think that they're there. Those illusions are there. They exist. I think you could pull many things from that. So that's cool. Uh, as I said earlier, I actually I really like the backdrop with like old ruined Germany. Super cool. Like um, I think one of the better ones is really early on where she's 
with like her mom and uh, they're kind of moving through their apartment and they move through the holes in the walls oh, yeah, to yeah. get from room to room. You're like, nice. You're like, that's, uh, that's cool. Even though it's like, yeah, that's horrible. That's how people live. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like Umberto D when he's got that yeah. big hole in his wall. She's got that big hole in his wall. And it's like, yeah, well, that's kind of how this goes. It's like, what are you going to do? Build a new wall with what money? It's inflation, Jarrett. Don't you know about the war? With a man in the White House? <laughs> I don't think so. So uh, I thought that was really nice. And it, it it doesn't come... It's not like there all the time. But it's consistent. Because even later on near the end, she'll be like walking through an old building and there's just bricks everywhere. And like she can't walk up the staircase. And then she just turns back around. She's like, I guess I can't go any farther. And it's like, shit. Metaphor. Good point. Metaphor, man. Coming, Do you think... Coming, coming at you. Metaphor is coming at you. Do you think at a certain point Germany couldn't move any farther, Jarrett? There's also lots of nice visual uh, like setups in this thing. One thing that I actually thought was really well done was um, when she's at like that party with Oswald and it's right after they kind of have one of their blow up things. And uh, there's like a dance with that old man. And she's like, oh, I'll go see what's going on at the other end here. And she kind of dances her way from one end of the room to the next to like to get to him. Right. But the way she dances, she's just like her arms are like down at her side. She's not really moving a lot. She's just kind of going with whatever the dance is to get from one person to the other. I, I like that. I was like, she's just kind of floating around the room. Kind of like life, Jer. You're just kind of floating around the life. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you're saying. You know, how, you know how political states and countries do similar things. Yeah, arms to the Probably. side, arms to the side. Uh, this movie also has a ton of uh, good screen caps and funny jokes. Like I have one thing where I put it on the Instagram later, but uh, she's talking about old balls. I was like, that's pretty funny. She's talking about like when that American guy comes in who's really drunk in the the train scene, and he's like, "What are you good for? One of those uh, sexual acts." He says it in a more prerogative way, Jared. Mm. And she's like, get out of here with your old balls. She's like, nobody wants any of that. And I was like, it's funny. She's quick. She's got that poodle hair that you mentioned before. And uh, she's dropping hot burns on uh, all the fellas out there. But yeah, it, it's good. It's a good show. The only thing I, I was like, I feel like they did Bill dirty. Because uh, I think he deserved better than that. And it's too bad. We've all got it coming, kid. It's too bad. But yeah, it's a good show. I got some uh, some production trivia here from uh, anonymous assholes on the internet. Sure. In order to sustain, sorry, should start here. Bad tempered and quarrelsome, Fassbender okay. shot the film during the day and worked on the script of Berlin Alexanderplatz during the night. That's that fourteen hour uh, mini series that we get to watch one day. RJ, no. In order, you know, I mean, Fassbender's working out pretty good. We'll see how the next two go. In order mm. to sustain his work schedule, he consumed large quantities of cocaine supplied nice. by the production manager, Harry Bear, and the actor, Peter Burling. According to mm. Burling, this was the main reason why the film went over the budget, as the cash for the cocaine was coming from Fengler. Uh, okay. uh, let's see from here. who? Fengler uh, would have been one of the producers, I think. Something like that. In okay. February 1978, the budget was reaching 1.7 um, marks, and two the two, and two most expensive scenes, the explosions at the beginning and at the end of the film, had not yet been shot. By the time Fassbender had learned about Fengler's deal with Kemp and the overselling of the film rights, he felt deceived and broke with his longtime collaborator Fengler. He demanded the status of a co-producer for himself and obtained an injunction against Fengler and Echelkamp. Fassbinder fired most of the film crew, ended the shooting in Coburg at the end of February, and then moved to Berlin, where he finished shooting the last scenes. Consequently, the biographer Thomas Elson Elsizer called the production of the film one of Fassbinder's least happy experiences, and Berlin one of the most decisive self-destructive episodes in Rainer's life. Is this, it's hard to like quantify self-destructive or not even self-destructive, but destructive episodes after, remember when you're talking about all the fear eats the soul sure. and you're talking about that, the, like <laughs> the waste that came from, uh, that him and his relationship with the his actor. relationship. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I feel like most things would pale in comparison to that, but so they, they feel that this was just as bad or well, one this of is diff- this his. Is- one of, one of his least happy experiences 
and Man, one of the most decisive self-destructive episodes. So. People really shit on Fastbender, hey? Well, I think he was he a I, weird dude, or I think, like what's I think, going I think on? he shit on himself a lot. Well, it happens. You know that self-deprecation thing that people are really hot on now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe he was ahead of the curve and he was just self-destructive. I think I think there was a whole lot of that. Um, sure. Maybe we should watch a documentary about him one of these days. Is there a fourteen-hour one by chance? Uh, hopefully. Nice. Well, if not, Perfect. maybe that's our next uh, our next goal. But yeah, okay. so uh, this movie was you know well regarded. All that, this and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to hear about who hated this movie? Um, I guess. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who hates Marriage of Maria Brown? One star by Leave Leavra Square. Yeah. After watching this film, I checked out Wikipedia just to check out what sort of douche made this film. Mm. And boy, did the personal life and controversy controversy section on Fastbender's <laughs> Wikipedia page deliver. Overall, actually watching the film, one out of ten. Reading Fastbinder's Wikipedia page and realizing what a horrible human being he was, but at the <gasps> same time being morbidly fascinated by him, eight point five out of ten. Uh, I mean, some of their ratings, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset about. They gave half a star to Call Me by their by your name, and it's like that's cool. Most of their five star films are just anime. But also Jennifer's Body, Cleo oh. 5 to 7, which pops up in five stars a lot, which is strange. So lots of anime and Miyazaki's. But then, you know, also Shape of Water, Black Panther, Force Awakens. So that trifecta there. Right there. Right there. Uh, from Chloe, one and a half star. Okay. I didn't like Maria Braun. I get how you could interpret this as a feminist film. And sure, that's cool and all. But she mm. was a bitch. She used people. Okay. And I also get that she's a product of her circumstances, having dealt with the war, but it still doesn't excuse that she's a shitty person. Also, in the end, it turns out the two men were actually using her and kind of renders the whole film pointless in my eyes. Yeah, it's kind of fair, but I mean, I wouldn't, you know. Well, I mean, that's it's weird because it's like none of this exists in a vacuum, folks. Yeah, that's 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 even more true. They gave uh, Chloe gave Raw half a star, which I I find funny. Now let's go to some five star films here, Jer. Uh, Spider Verse. Oh, Split. Not great. Not great, Jer. What else we got here? Movies and movies. Okay, well this person and the last person gave Moonlight five stars. Moonlight's a good film. That's fine. Just you know trends I'm noticing. All of the Marvel movies, five stars. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. I wonder if Seven Pounds is in here also. Nope. Nope. Finally, we're going to do Luke, two stars. Okay. I really just don't care for movies where the sole point is that the character is a sociopathic capitalist solely looking out for themselves. Mm. Nightcrawler, story of women, and this all have that thread in common. But where Nightcrawler has some intense sequences, the other two are more couched in drama and brutality of choices. Oh, what horrible ideas. Why would you make a movie like that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Focusing in on this film, it opens wonderfully. Absolutely love it. And I was 100% on board with the film up until Maria's black lover exunts the film in a pretty absurd way. From there, it just maintains its path and shows Maria being an increasingly messed up sack of shit. Special Mm. attention deserves to be paid to her dialogue, which, more often than not, are cliche one-liners that actually make me ache. Petra Von Kent or Jean Dillman, this ain't. Were it not so long, it'd just be a decent movie, but at at cocaine up Fassbender squeezing two hours out of this, it's just not all that valuable. I, I always like that they're throwing out some cocaine references, and that's good. It's good. Hey, hey, hey! People forget, and you're the champion of this. But of cocaine fueled movies can lead to greatness, like Maximum Overdrive. Exactly. And and uh, was that Cujo? Uh, oh well, no, he doesn't even remember writing. Oh, Cujo. because of the of the drunkenness. Or because the of the coke, it was right, a right, mixture right. of both. It was just one day he woke up and Cujo was just written on his dresser, and he was like, "Okay." Not He's shocked like, since this one is made so much more oh, accessibly more. and commercially. But still, how do you go from Fear, Fear Eats the Soul to this in just four years? Well, he might have answered his own question in the, the paragraph there. Cocaine. But Cocaine. I don't know. They're both good. They're, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and I'm I'm not even going to lie to you, Jer. 
Luke's doesn't have bad opinions. Okay. M- most of the five star films are things that we like, mm-hmm. or Criterion movies, things like Mulholland Drive, things like Silence of the Lambs. But there's also five star films like Night of the Hunter. And what else do we got on here? Ooh, good five star films: Swiss Army Man, Blair Witch, Passion, Joan of Arc, Perfect Blue. Ooh, Funny Games, bad one, bad one. You almost had me, bro. You almost had me. It's divisive. It is. Which one? Funny All games. Of them? Ooh, here's some weird shit. One star films, Dead Ringers, Virgin Suicides, Exorcist 3, Grey Gardens. Weird. Real weird. Oh. Wild. Wild stuff, man. You know, it's it's hard to say. You know, I bet if people looked at your one star films, they'd be like, what's up with this Duncan guy? Oh, oh Surf Nazis Must Die, one stars the fuck movie's wicked you ever heard that soundtracks hey you remember when scores got brought up earlier yeah what about uh surf nazis must die it's not too bad it's not bad it's pretty good well there you go cool um any other thoughts no i i, I liked it i thought it was good <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it that's it that's hey folks you get what you pay for uh-huh after the break, RJ left the gas on. He just had that one last dart. Forgot to turn it off. Do you think that's why my my furnace wasn't working this morning? Oh, I don't know. Is that, is that how those uh, eco-friendly ones work now? Well, I do like the darts with the the eco-pilot light, yeah. you know? Right. It's that's, a cleaner burn. Yeah, you should stop doing that. It's a cleaner burn. Think about the kitties. I don't do it around them. I'm not an animal. <laughs> well, when it takes up the whole house, everything inside will go too. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> 